you know, square roots can actually be simplified quite a bit, and after we simplify them, we can often see a lot of structure within that particular number. So it's really cool to, when you, to look at a number when there's square roots involved and ask, gee, can I simplify this number a little bit? Let's take a look at an example. Here I see negative square root of 200. Well, that seems like a really big number, 200, it sounds huge. But if we use one of the key properties about square roots, we can actually simplify this quantity quite a bit. And that property that I want to employ here is the property that if we have the square root of a product, that always equals the product of the square roots. And so in this case, what I see here is that if I have square root of something times something else, it actually equals the square root of the something times the square root of the something else. Why is that handy here? Well, let's take a look and see if we can factor 200. Well, the easiest way to factor 200, put that negative sign way out in front, is to say, well, that's just 100 times 2. But now I can use this property. And notice that I have the square root of something times something. So that's going to equal negative sign square root of the first number times the square root of the second number. But the square root of 100, we can actually figure out. That's just 10, because 10 squared is 100. So in fact, this equals negative 10 square root of 2. So negative square root of 200 actually is the exact same thing as negative 10 square root of 2. And somehow, in my mind, I think this is a little bit more friendly. Certainly, you can see the square root part has shrunken quite a bit at the expense of having this multiplication by 10 out in front. So neat. So there's a great application of this particular property. There's a similar property for division. Let's take a look. So here I have the square root of 36 divided by 121. And it turns out that with division, we have the same property holding. The square root of a quotient of two numbers actually equals the quotient of the individual square roots. That's a really fancy way of just saying, if you have the square root of something with a top and the bottom, you can take the square root of the top, the square root of the bottom, and divide them. So if I take this value here, which looks really threatening to me, I can break it up using this property as square root of the top divided by square root of the bottom. But hey, the square root of the top, I can actually figure that out, because the square root of 36 is 6. And why? Because 6 times 6 is 36. And the square root of 121, well, a little bit trickier, but I happen to know that it's 11, because 11 squared is 121. So in fact, I see that this complicated looking thing with a square root is just the happy, friendly 6 over 11. Pretty cool. So using these properties, you can see that we can actually get the job done. Let me show you that we can now use these properties to actually simplify all sorts of things. Looking at the square root of 12 times the square root of 3 looks sort of complicated, but 12 I can write as what? I can write the 12 as 4 times 3. And then I've got this times square root of 3. So I'm using the property of just factoring. And now I'm going to use the property that the square root of a product is the product of the square roots. And so I get this neat looking thing, all those pieces. But the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's the square root of 3 times 3, which is 9. But wait, the square root of 9 is just 3. So in fact, this is just 2 times 3, which equals 6. Very cool. This complicated looking product of square roots is just the number six, the familiar six in disguise, traveling under the cover of night. All right, let's take a look at the square root of 147 divided by the square root of three. Again, this looks really complicated. I want us to look at this now in two different ways. The first way is to just rewrite this as square root of 147 all divided by 3. One huge square root that covers the entire fraction. Then we could actually divide out and see what we get. So 3 goes into uh, 14 four times. 
4 times 3 is 12. When I subtract, I get a 2. I bring down the 7. And so 3 goes into 27 9 times. And so what I see is 49. So in fact, this simplifies to the square root of 49, which I immediately recognize to be, in fact, equal to just 7, because 7 squared is 49. So I see this complicated looking thing is just the number 7 in disguise. Want to see a different way of, of realizing that answer? Let me show you another way. It's to realize that I can factor the top a little bit. The top actually can be factored as the square root of 49 times 3 all over the square root of 3. Well, then I use that property that allows me to break up that product into two pieces. And then I can simplify, actually. I can simplify by reducing the fraction to an equivalent object. And I'm just left with square root of 49. And then again, we still get 7. So all correct roads will lead to an answer of 7. And there's just two different ways to think about it. So that's pretty cool. So you can actually use these techniques to actually simplify complicated looking numbers to familiar ones. Pretty cool.